All right, so let's get started. Yesterday we have uh, created a branch and we have also seen a merge, right? Today we'll see another merge scenario. Now we are on master branch. So if I check the status on the master branch, everything is clean. Like we have merged some changes from source branch, which is B1 branch to this master. Okay, perfect. Let's say now on this master, I'm going to make some changes. Okay, I'm going to make some file, file 5.txt. And let's say, file created on master branch. Okay, so uh, yeah, we have a file created on this master branch. Now I would like to add this file and commit this change. All right, something like this. So done, everything is good. So is this fifth file and this is this latest commit available on B1 branch? Do you think were they available? No, I don't. Right, definitely we will not have those changes because branches are like a parallel entities. Whatever changes you make in one branch will not be visible in the other. So we have got an understanding on this, right? Yesterday we have seen um, all these uh, concepts. So let's go back. What we'll do, we'll go back to B1 branch and we'll make some changes there. So how to switch the branch? How to B1 now? How to go to B1 now? Branch B1. Is it a branch command? Check out, check out. Check out, check out right? We check out, we use check, check out. out to switch the branch. Get checkout B1 so that, yeah, you will be switched to B1. You will see the files of B1. If you do LS, if you do log, everything will be applied on B1, right? So you don't have that latest commit which we made today and we don't have any uh, changes over there, right? Good. So now, uh, <clears throat> Okay, now let's make a file here. Here I'm creating a file. One, but second, one second, Kriti. If I want to merge from master to B1, we can do it, right? You can do it. Okay. You can do from any branch to other branch, you can merge. But the general concept is like uh, we follow some branching strategy. Branching strategy is uh, like uh, uh, we, you, you create uh, temporary branches from master branch. Okay. make changes there then merge into the master that's a general practice we do okay so, directly but, we yeah, move from the master to the directly you don't uh, you don't uh, uh, merge from master to uh, the feature branch but yeah okay. see when you are, want to try or test out some changes you okay. create a branch from master okay okay then make changes there then merge these changes to master that's a general practice but if you talk about can't we do the technically is it not it is possible you can merge from any branch to any other branch. Okay, so here I'm going to create a new file. Okay, so file created on B1. So obviously, see, it was saying it was untracked file. So for untracked file to get it tracked, what we should do? Get add. Yeah. Get add. Get commit minus m file on B1. Okay. So done. Okay. If you see the status, it will be clean. I'm done. Let's say, assume that this B1 is for temporary purpose. Okay. Now that I made the changes, I just want to merge this, right? I just want to merge this to uh, master. Okay, I want to merge these changes to master. So how to do the merge? You, you can merge from part. anywhere. First, let's go to the destination branch where you want to merge. Get checkout master. Here, if you see, yes, you have file five. I'm not bothered about it, okay, because I do have a requirement, another requirement. I made changes on the same file on B1. Now, I want to merge the changes. Merging means integrate the changes from b1 to master integrate changes from one branch to another so how to do this integration or how to do this merge what is the command 
git merge source branch and destination branch. okay source branch is b1 destination branch is master okay so you have git merge uh, b1 and master so uh, if i run this what happens will it merge successfully what happens to this so actually the both files are same file 5 and file 5 are there in both the branches it may get a, a conflict like that if i am wrong uh, okay Uh, fine, you get a conflict. But what? Why is this conflict? With the same file names are there, right? In branch B one file five is it? Master also we have file five. Is it just because so, of the file name or anything else? No, no, no. Prithi, okay. it's just like uh, uh, just like if you uh, you know edit same line uh, in that file. Uh, then definitely the uh, merge uh, conflict will come, and then you resolve it uh, in different ways. Like um, uh, there are a couple of uh, merge techniques or uh, conflict techniques are there that you, you can resolve. I can't remember which on the fly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, see, uh, like like you said, yes, it's because of the same file name. But the reason behind the conflict, like when you get a conflict, why you get a conflict is. Like you have something else beyond that. Just uh, means I want to say here, it's not just because of the same file. Sometimes even though it's the same file, you'll not you'll not get a conflict. So you have to understand what's happening at the back. And generally, people think that yeah, because uh, like we get uh, like uh, because it's the same file name, we get a conflict. But there is much beyond that. So to uh, understand this, let's take up this scenario. Um, step wise so that you will get a clarity and concept behind this so yeah, i am just talking about the steps we have done first we have master branch b1 branch with respect to this file 5 what we have done i have made a file 5 here i had a commit here commit here right so uh, just tell me is this commit available on b1 no no right it's not available okay perfect that's the first step second step is i came to b1 branch i made a file i made a commit here called b see i'm referring commits with alphabets uh, instead of referring everything with alpha numeric and all just consider this as commit a commit b now okay fine this is what we did right then we were trying to merge changes from b1 to master okay what is the concept of merge merging changes from B one to master. What is meant by merging? See, merging basically is integrating, bringing changes from one branch to another. Okay, changes bringing changes from B one to master. So, if you see the log or commit history of this particular file five on B one, okay, this is the log of file five on B one. It's simply B, right? and similarly if you see the log of this file 5 same file on master branch it's a commit a okay so merge means just imagine this log is to this box should come and sit here does it mean that it should overwrite changes of master and keep only the changes of b1 if it overrides there's no point of using it we don't need it anymore right then should it ignore the changes from b1 and put only the changes of master either way it's not what version control system will do isn't it got the point see here it has got only this log history only this commit should come and sit here means is it replacing this a1 just imagine there were two boxes you want to bring this and put here it will override this box the existing log actually both of them should not happen see git is after all a tool a version control system it can inform you hey see here there is a conflict i don't know what to do whether to keep uh, changes of master and ignore incoming changes or whether to keep incoming changes and ignore or overwrite existing changes git has a confusion at this point it will raise the conflict right suppose let's say if b also had got this comment then when you merge will we get a conflict let's suppose okay b1 branch has got commit a commit b will it get a conflict 
yes, I guess. Will we get a conflict? If it has got commit A, commit B, when you are merging, why do we get a conflict? A is already there, just B will be yeah. added here. See, the point of conflict, you get a conflict when, if source branch is missing some commits, which are there on destination, then you get a conflict. Right, that's where you get a conflict. Preeti, can you please repeat one more time? Because the source uh, branch <laughs> is sure I'm doing. Source branch is B1 branch, right? B1 branch is missing some commits, means B1 branch doesn't have this commit here, which is there on destination, right? Right, mm -hmm. A is already there on destination. When you merge, changes of B1 should come and sit here, but B1 doesn't have A means should it write, should it override the changes of the destination branch? No, yeah. it will not. It will not. Similarly, should it ignore a B1 and keep only A even though you merge? That's not how it works. Right? So finally, mm -hmm. what it is doing, it is arising conflict. It has a confusion what to do with the changes. There, so it arises a conflict means it informs us. See, there is a conflict. I don't know which changes to keep. You have to resolve the conflict manually as a DevOps person or else as a owner of these files, as a user of these files, you have to resolve the conflict. It will just inform you. That's what I'm saying, right? We may get conflict with multiple people. Here, conflict within like my own repository means with my changes itself. Similarly, the same concept is applicable with others also. That also we will discuss. Same concept. Okay, source branch is missing some commits which are there on destination. This is the key point where you get a conflict. Let me explain you same file, no conflict scenario. Shall I explain that so that it may clear few other questions? See, okay. let's say this is a master branch. Okay, I have some file one, file two, whatever. I have some commits called commit A, commit B. Then I made a branch from master. Okay, then I made a branch. Let's say then I made this B1 branch or B2 branch. Then I have all the commits of A, B. Okay, then I make some commits C. So now if I merge, will I get a conflict? No. No, because A, B is still there. Source branch means this branch. Okay, the right hand side is the source branch. It's not missing any commits that are there on destination. But same file, let's say it's same file. Still, you will not get a conflict because already existing commits were there. The only new commit will be merged into the destination. That's what happened actually yesterday for us. Yesterday, file one, file two were there. Then we made a file three, right? So you will, if file one, file two were already there, but you will not get a conflict. See, the point to note here is, it's not just because of the same file. Same file, correct? Yes, you get a conflict when it is same file. Same file and also source, if it is missing some commits, which are there on this, then you get a conflict, not just because of a same file. Making sense, everyone? Yes, uh, Priti. Uh, one more thing, uh, like when we are saying same file, uh, Git doesn't store file name, right? It's a metadata, it's uh, stored separately. It's instead of taking snapshots of your uh, changes, right? Which is there in the See, commit. That's what Git will so, not work with the file names. Git will not work with the, uh, the changes you are making. Git works with the commits. That's what, if source is missing some commits, Git always uh, checks the commits. It so, is not uh, bothering about the file, but when you have same file, there is a chance that you your source branch will be missing some commits. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, uh, what I'm saying is like I mm -hmm. was working in a CA Harvest, which was also a kind of a, uh, this uh, repository tool. There, uh, I was facing conflicts when definitely the same file, but when your change is being overwritten already uh, in the existing something in repository. So you are uh, having something outside of the repository. And when you are trying to bring into the system, which was already there. So same line, if something is getting overwritten, then it will complain what I should do. That's Probably what is a conflict, right? It's overwriting. Yeah. 
Yes. That's so what here, we got the conflict. So, so here <clears throat> in this one on the screen, which says, if source uh, source branch is missing some commits which are there on the destinations, then it will rise a commit. So I mean, here I have a confusion. If it is not there then there should not be anything to override because in one it is missing and in another one is not there. So I mean, where it is overriding, that's what I'm, I don't know, I mean, I'm new to it, so, but it is creating still confusion to me. Just first apply it on Git, okay? You are talking about remote repository. Here, remember, I'm still on local. Remote also the same happens, but their source works like a local, like when you are pushing and uh, remote works like a destination. Here I'm talking with respect to branches. Okay, first apply this to your local repository, remote repositories, then apply to your version control system. It okay. makes more sense then. See, one more thing, uh, like uh, first learn or master one tool, then you may make a comparison, that would be better. Because see the terminology user there, uh, the commands user there might be slightly different. Conceptually, they'll be same. The same thing, I, I believe definitely the same thing is applied when you get a conflict, but terminology will be different. The way you uh, do will be different. So first master this one, then try to relate to it. Okay. Does it need to have same commit to avoid a conflict? Or Not commit same commits. See, like I told you here, right? The log no, no, history of source, the log comments, history of comments. source, not comments. I'm talking about the comment. After Not comment. Comment, comment have nothing to do. Yeah. Okay. Comment is just for our understanding got purpose. Got it. Maybe I didn't understand. So you mean uh, there should be same file in master and uh, even uh, otherwise uh, it won't match. You mean that is what you are trying to say? Same. Sorry. Say. Can you come again, please? Um, so you are saying AV. Uh, AB is a file in master. AB is not a file, sorry. File 5 is the file name. A is the commit. The commit ID I'm referring as A. Commit A. There is a commit happened on file 5 in master branch. That's a commit A. Then what we did, second step, we made another, like we created a new file, file 5 on B1 branch, made a commit, which is commit B. Those are commits. Okay. There is some one commit on a, a master branch. There is some other commit on B1 branch on the same file. When you are merging, this is the commit list or commit history. Okay, on B1 branch. This is the commit history on master branch. So when you are merging, what happens? This tries to come and sit here. It means it's overwriting. It will not allow. Similarly, it cannot ignore it. See here this one. So there arises a conflict. Still anyone so, having confusion? Hmm. So, uh, Preeti, hmm. uh, so Preeti, can I conclude like you, as you written on this screen, like source branch or any branch for sake, hmm. if that has a commit and but not any is, branch, let me correct you, not any branch. When you are merging, there will be hmm. one source branch and one destination branch. So if your source branch means from where you are bringing the changes, is mm -hmm. missing some commit IDs. Commits here actually mean commit IDs. Commit which IDs. were there on the destination branch during your merge. In our uh -huh. case, commit A is there on master, which is not there on B1 branch. So, so you are getting it a will It hmm. will create the conflict. Correct. Correct. Uh, because so, the reason uh, I told you, imagine this uh -huh. was like a box. It will come and sit uh -huh. here. Should it override this or ignore it? It doesn't know. It has a confusion. It's a tool. So it will arise a conflict. Conflict is like it's informing us. It's not actually conflict is not a bad thing or you should avoid conflicts. No, it's always good. It's informing you like so-and-so is happening. Please take care. You have to resolve the conflict. How to resolve, I'll explain. If you understood this concept, I'll explain. So, uh, Everyone if, clear? Hmm. Yeah, if I can say like it was trying to build the commit history and since one of the commit was missing and that is what it's saying can i make a, um, the commit history including the missing one that is what behind the scene it's going on something like that no it's asking whether to put this commit a or put commit b or put both in the destination 
Okay, okay. I See, when it. you are merging, it doesn't know whether to keep overwrite A, that's what this cross and we put B, or else ignore A and put B. It, it has a confusion. So it's asking us, which one should I keep? Should I overwrite this and put B? Or else should I put A and ignore this B? Or should I put both? Git don't know. It is asking us now. That's what is a conflict. It will tell us to decide. How to decide what message it will show? I'm going to show you now. No, clear, clear, clear to me, uh, Priti. Thank you so much. How about others? Anyone else having confusion? I mean, it's like uh, it's like there is only one place for the commit, but since there are two commits, which one to uh, keep in that one place? is the main issue right not exactly see this is a commit b means one place means like maybe your understanding yeah in your terms yes correct see yes this is the it's commit. like there was only one place to huh, uh, accept the commit right huh. like but it was like a box are... imagine this yes, box should yes, come yes. it here that's why i draw this box kind of full so you may like come put your analogy like that this should come it here means it should override yeah. this place, something like this. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now I understood. Thank you so hmm. much. Technically, we should say that source branch is missing some comments. We should not say this box is sitting here and all. So the point here is, see, this master branch is having some comments <clears throat> which are there, which are not there in your source branch. Clear, everyone? Yes, Priti. It would be actually right. more clear if we practice. Uh, and... mm, I'm showing you. Okay, I'm showing you. Of course, yeah, you have to practice it after the class. Let, before merging, I'm not running this command yet. Okay, I'll show you before that. Let me show you. I'm on master branch. It will show the log of master only, but still, sorry. Let me just give to... uh, Yeah. Also, one line. What is this? Git log master. Git log. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now see, which is your destination branch? Uh, destination is the uh, master, right? Master, which is the source branch? Source branch is B1. Just a second, please. Just a second. Okay, so if you see here, see this is same, second commit is also same, this one is also same, this one is also same, see here, when you see last one, see this mm -hmm. one, this is your destination branch. On destination branch, you have a commit called 062F, that was missing here. Yeah. CA207B4, that, I mean, that, sorry, this is uh, your destination branch, CA20, that's mm -hmm. not available. Oh, yeah, that's not available on your source branch. This is your source. B1 is your source. See, this is the B1 branch. Mm -hmm. Right? This particular commit, CA2074, is not available on the B1 branch. And it was about the same file. Right? So, mm -hmm. you get a conflict. It's about the same file, of course. File name should be same, like it's the same file. And then the your source branch is missing some commit. So if I try to merge, git merge b1 master, right? Can you see here? Auto merging failed. Conflict. Earlier yesterday, what we saw, we saw yesterday that there was a, I mean, fast forwarding merge or auto merge happened because there is no conflict. But now it has got a conflict. Merge conflict in file five automatic merge fails. See, automatically it cannot merge because like I said, Git is after all a tool. It cannot take decisions, but it will not overwrite. It will not ignore. In the beginning, we learned it. Of course, not only with other person, you may get conflicts within your own code. So now what it is saying, fix the conflicts. You have to fix it and commit the result. You decide. 
right? So how to fix the conflict? When you open this file, see it was showing here in the VS Code. This is another additional advantage you have in this VS Code editor. Okay, where you can see the or resolve the conflicts easily. Okay, there are multiple ways to resolve it. Okay, let me show you how to resolve in VS Code editor. This is the advantage. When you open this file in an editor, it will show you contents from both the branches. See. Here head indicates current change. Current change means in the current branch. This is the change from master. This is the incoming change means from source branch, from B1 branch. So here you can decide. You can edit this file like you want, whether you want to keep both the lines or whether you want to remove both of them or whether you want to keep line from master, delete from B1. You can edit like however you want. Just edit the file, delete all this uh, uh, data okay all these lines you can just delete it with the uh, delete uh, and all right or else this vs code provide uh, vs code editor provides us with an option very easily see accept current change only means only this line will remain others will go away or else accept incoming change okay means only b1 branch changes will be there others will be removed except both or do you want to compare this facility? This options are available in this editor. That's another advantage of using this editor. Or else you can open it another merge editor. Okay, that uh, we can do many ways. You can resolve it in multiple ways. I'm choosing both the changes. I want to keep both the lines. So click this. See, that's all. So it's a change to the file. Whenever you make a change, save it. Then what you have to do as per gate, whenever you make a change, what we should do. Now we, we have you need to commit. add and add commit. and comment. Add yes, and comment. yeah, that's what just simple minus a minus m. Let's say resolve the conflicts. That's all clean. Now see everything will be clean. You got the changes from B1, everything is set. So, Priti, can you show the commit history on both the branches so that we can see uh, how the commit history now looks like? Okay, source branch will not be affected. You are merging into destination, so source branch will not be affected in any way. But in destination, mm -hmm. you get a new commit added because just now we did this, right? Yes, so, meaning yes. you got all the changes from B1 to master. So this is how you get a conflict. Same concept when you get a conflict with others, like multiple people are working when you're pushing your changes. Concept is same. Okay, but you get it from another person. How to uh, work with that also we will see. Okay, before we go to remote and work with multiple people, first you have to understand all these concepts. So we were still on our local repository, reminding you. Okay, we didn't go to remote yet. Uh, Preeti, can I ask one more question? Mm, yeah, please. You see, um, I generally get confused between the branches, and um, uh, I, we say, right, it's a master branch or development branch or QA branch or uh, bug fix branches. <laughs> we name, right? But at the same time, when I read the book or articles or blogs, uh, it says branches are nothing but uh, movable pointers on the commit. So I then get confused like there are so many snapshots and each one is called branch. Is that like, is that a statement correct? Like let's say yes. master branch and you have 10 commits. It means that master branch has 10 branches. Not 10 branches, 10 commits, that's all. You can create a branch from that master branch, which will have, let's say, B1, which will have all these 10 commits. Like you are just making a copy of this master. It's like a virtual why copy. The, so why the, the statement, uh, it doesn't make sense, like branches are nothing but points. Please send me one. that article so that I can uh, answer properly, okay? The statement, okay, if you sure, send me sure. in which context that was explained, I can explain you better. Okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hmm. All right. So, yeah. So, we were working on this master and all. Now, uh, shall we get into the next concept? See, branching, we will also see the context on remote. 
Okay, but before going there, there is another concept called stash. Good to go or any one, any questions? Can I get confirmation from every one of you? We are good to go. Okay. Yeah, it's good to go. <clears throat> right, so let's talk about the concept of stash. What is this stash actually? Uh, let me explain you this with a scenario. Let's say you have some, uh, um, let's suppose we are in master branch. Okay, we had some changes. We were making some changes to file one, file two, okay, file three and so on. I'm making some changes, work is in progress. Okay, I'm just making changes to all these files. Then I have got a, a very quick or priority task. Okay, I have some other priority task. I should commit this file three, okay. Uh, to remote. I have to push my changes to remote, file 3 and all, okay? But file 2, file 1 has got some incomplete changes. But still, file 3, I have to push to remote. This is some priority task, and I have to put this work on hold for some time. So, uh, if I, I can commit a single file and do it, but always the best practice is when you commit or when you are merging, always keep your uh, working tree clean. Means see, it will show us, right, when we do status, it is all working tree is clean, means all the changes were added and committed, right? Mm -hmm. So it will show us working. That's the best practice always to keep the repository working tree, sorry, keep the repo, uh, working tree clean before you move your changes or before you uh, merge or do whatever. So in this case, in this particular case, because work is in progress, it, will it allow me to uh, add and commit without these incomplete changes? It will uh, it be always asking me to add and commit everything, right? But I cannot add and commit this file one or file two because they were incomplete changes. I don't want to push this incomplete changes to uh, remote or I don't want to move them to staging area and local repository, right? At the same time, I don't want to lose them because halfway the work is done. I don't want to discard those changes. At the same time, I can't add and commit those changes because they were all incomplete. Right? How do we handle this now? That's where stash comes in. Means you can stash your unstable changes. Stash means what it will do? When you stash, it will move your unstaged changes into some temporary virtual shelves. Okay? It will put them on virtual shelves so you can commit and uh, move your changes. Your repository looks clean. I mean, your working tree looks clean. So it will be all, you can work on this priority task. Later, once you are done with this, you want to continue on your incomplete or pending task. Then you can get the changes back from your temporary shells, which is called unstash. Right? Into this branch. You can get those changes back. And continue your incomplete work. So this is the concept of stash and unstash. To put your changes on these temporary shelves. Yeah? Uh, so let me show you. Mm. How many cells are there on the temporary stash? How many? It's means, not like say, a how many shells and all. It's just virtual. When you move your changes, they'll be placed on this temporary shelf. That's all. So in, in short, it's like uh, saving your uh, hmm. uh, work in the temporary uh, or the, sorry, working directory itself rather than correct. moving it to the staging part. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. It's not yeah. Let's apply this and see. Mm -hmm. See, I'm having so many changes here. Get status. Uh, okay, so now I'm making some changes to this file one. Okay, add this file two also. Okay. So I made some changes to these two files. If you see the status, see, changes not staged. It is asking me to add and commit them, but I don't want to put them because those were incomplete changes. So I want to put them on hold for some time. What I can do, simply git stash. So if you do git stash, whatever changes were there, like unstaged changes in your working directory, 
will be moved to some temporary shelves or will be saved okay till you want to get them back right so let's see simply do git status see saved the working directory and index state work on progress see if you notice here see the, there is no third line on first file which i added just now there is no second line on the second file so do you think that they were gone see when you see the status working tree is clean yeah does it mean that they were gone let's see no let's see how to see our changes git stash list listen carefully i'll take up your questions in the chat window in few minutes please listen see git stash list each time you stash you can stash any number of times later some other things may be there i can stash again every stash will create this stash number to see what changes went into this stash git show stash number sorry git show the stash number right stash every i told you there can be multiple stash right every stash will have a number and the indexing starts from zero because it's a first stash zero indexing starts from zero zero means first stash see here it will show you what files were stashed see um <clears throat> yeah the first the first file have got this one second file have got this one right so it was all stashed now also working tree is clean my files are not having changes perfect fine they were stashed but now i want to get them back unstash how do you unstash again the same command but stash pop stash number means how do you unstash stash pop what this will do is yes it will bring changes back to your working directory also pop means it it's like delete drop it will delete the stash from the temporary shelves means when you do stash list there will be nothing how do you see the changes on the temporary shelves i cancelled it this is our right but when you do this kind of stash pop it will also delete from this temporary shelves it will drop it clean it right so let us do the sun stash um pretty like why we are getting the wip on master work in progress because see this stash is nothing but which are work in progress right it was showing you this is nothing but uh, this stash is coming from master work in progress on master and it was showing the uh, topmost commit of that master branch so like uh, about it, that you have this work in progress changes right so like it automatically came w hmm. okay yes. when you run this stash list it is showing the stash number and from which branch it is and where is the head pointer of this branch means the topmost commit of that branch it was showing it so the like latest commit is this is the latest commit of master that's why it was showing that commit message also so like whenever we do stash it will show w wip on current branch correct okay correct to which branch it belongs because uh, the remote shells are common for all the branches when you stash you can stash from any branch okay they'll be in, under the stash list okay and like i can let's say i can go to b1 and then i can pop like can i pop it you can you can okay yes okay see stash pop what will you will do uh, it will unstash and also unstash means bring the changes back to working directory and it will also delete from temporary shells no residue left on temporary shells tell me yeah uh, pretty pop means it's a deleting uh, uh, in to unstash right uh, it will unstash plus und it will unstash means bring the changes to your working directory and also deletes from temporary shells okay it will clean up from uh, the temporary shells in the audio is it for everyone or is it only for me anyone else is having any disturbance no 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 not from my side maybe i can suggest one thing please keep muted everyone unless you have a question if you have a question then unmute please maybe background noise might be also there please keep muted everyone if you have a question then unmute please 
um pretty it seems like i little bit i know uh programming also so it looks like the implementation is like a stack where you can push or pop right so since when you do a stashing it's it's behind the scene it's doing push and now you are taking from the data structure it's santos pop. let's not divert from the topic okay it may confuse others everyone is not from development okay anything off we shall discuss after the class okay at the end of the class so no it's something uh it's it's giving me the essence like that is how it is implemented and mm, that's, that's what i understood right uh, so let's not get uh diverted into development and all like i said people are from different backgrounds we shall discuss off the class anything else you have okay so i'm just doing unstash stash pop Okay, do you see here stash pop changes not stage for commit, right? And when you do this stash pop, yes, it was saying changes on stage. See at the back end, if you see file one has got this third line, file two has got this uh, like a second line changes for back. Also, here you can see dropped the stash, it has deleted from temporary shells, meaning it has unstashed. First, check the status. Yes, working tree is not clean, means you got your unstashed changes. Then you can also see the um, message here. See, stash list. If I see the stash list, there is nothing because it has dropped, it has deleted from temporary shells. Got it, everyone? Clear? All of you? Yeah. Yeah. Suppose, uh, so you mean to say, like, uh, if, if, you, if you want to commit file three, even uh, if file one and file two is uh, not completely committed, then we have to use git stash uh, to keep working tree clean. Uh, you can commit one commit a particular file also, but that's the best practice to keep your working directory clean. I mean, working tree clean. If you, you may have multiple changes and all to make sure they were not going into staging area and all, you can commit them. I mean, you can stash them and then later commit other changes. Okay. okay. Right. So this is how you can stash and unstash. Stash is git stash. I mean, stash command is simply git stash. Unstash is git stash pop. Okay. I will show you another type of stash. I'm stashing again. What is the command to stash? See, changes were there back. I want to stash them again. How to stash? That's all, right? Yeah, git stash. Yeah, git stash. It's done. So now changes were gone. If you see the status, working tree will be clean. Okay, done. Now I want to get those unstaged changes. First, first let's see the list. Yes, it should be creating again a stash number. Okay, now I want to unstash. What is the command to unstash? Git stash pop. And, uh... There is also another way called git stash apply. This will also unstash the same. This will also unstash, but then what is the difference? It won't but, return. But then what is the difference? It will not delete from the temporary shelves. It will just still keep a copy on temporary shelves. What is the use of it? The advantage or the use of this is maybe later I want to complete these incomplete changes in some other branch. Okay, I don't want to mess up this master. So I want to switch to, I want to go to some other branch like B1 branch. There I can unstash and work that work on that incomplete work. Right? So if you just want to maintain a copy, you can do stash up. Like that is the only difference. See here, your changes are back like stash pop means it has unstashed. Status, see, you got the changes. But here you don't see something like it has dropped it. It will not delete it. Meaning you still see it on temporary edition. Like I said, you may switch to some other branch later if you want. You can apply the changes. This is another way to start. Got it, everyone? We will also summarize the commands again. So this is another type to stash and unstash. I will show you one more thing. If I want to stash again, what is the command? git stash right but yeah. if i do git stash every file you have here file one file two whatever there might be two files or three files whatever unstated in everything are being stashed 
but i don't want it i want to stash only a particular file correct how to do that i want to stash only a particular file not everything yeah that is also possible otherwise if you just simply run git stash what everything any number of files any number of changes will be stashed which are like unstaged changes but i want to stash only a particular file that's called partial stash or uh, uh, stashing a specific file with a minus p flag if you do this git stash minus p it will prompt you on every file do you want to stash this or not okay again you can uh, uh, in that particular file also you can decide which part of the code should be stashed or not it means you can iterate it more better you can refine that better into how many lines you want to stash how much code you want to stash even you can do that kind of iteration but we don't do that generally we don't need it uh, just for some idea see here see it is asking you on every file this is about uh, file 1 do you see here file 1 okay it was asking stash this hunk or not yes for yes there were other flags do you see here n q a d e like if you want to uh, search only these particular words and stash them even that kind of refinement you can do but i am just doing yes and no for it n right see here now if you see carefully See, file one is only stashed. File two is not there. Uh, not stashed means second line is still here. Unstated changes for that. But the third line of first file is gone, which is stashed. Let me show you with status command. Right? Do you see that file two is still there? Only file one is stashed. This is useful if you want to stash only particular changes. All or else if you want to stash them separately. I want to stash this again, but separately, not into the single stash. See, now if you do stash list, you will get a three stash because older one I did not delete. Now I did one for file one, file two. Whichever you want to unstash, you can get them with the stash number. Got it, all of you. See, do the hands on after listening the class. Like after watching this, I mean, um, just go through the recording once again and do the hands on. Okay. Uh, after listening, if you do the hands on on the same day, it will register in your minds. Okay. You remember the concept. Forget about running the, I mean, the syntax of the commands and all. You concentrate on learning the concepts so that it will be clear. Don't pile up the things. Let's say I'll do it tomorrow or day after tomorrow, all of it together. Don't keep uh, that kind of plan, please. Do it every day. Okay, so these are all advanced concepts. If you do on the same day, you can get them registered better. So there were multiple stashes this way. If you want to unstash, git pop stash or git stash apply, or else let's say I don't want to unstash. I want to delete all of them. Git stash draw stash zero. I want to delete it. That's all. It means drop means. It will just delete from this shelf. That's it. It will not unstash. See, drop it. It doesn't unstash. Okay, if you see the list, yes. Instead of drop, because can give pop also, right? Pop will unstash, undelete. I don't want to unstash. I want only delete. Okay, got it. Yeah. But, and then drop will delete a particular stash. I want to delete everything from the uh, temporary shelves clear everything might be clear see okay see there were a lot of things uh, don't worry to memorize all of them okay uh, like i said just try to understand the concept anyway i'm just writing here git stash okay git stash pop one minute Okay, then git stash apply, then git stash um, drop, git stash clear. Pop will take some stash number, apply also needs some stash number, drop also needs some stash number. So what is the stash does?
this will just move the changes from working directory to temporary shells and this one changes from temporary shells to working directory plus plus deletes from temporary shells right apply also moves the changes from temporary directory to working directory but plus it will not delete from temporary shells right and then drop drop will just delete from temporary shells that's all uh, te uh, delete from temporary shells a particular stash not everything because you have to provide the stash number here this will also delete from it will delete everything delete all stashes correct Please, yeah, request. Uh, could you please uh, explain again all these five commands in a short? Uh, I'm doing in every English. Yeah, this this is this chart. Git stash will move your unstaged changes from your working directory to temporary shells. Git stash pop, yes, it will move. So it will uh, bring the changes from temporary shells to working directory, and also delete from temporary shells. Right. stash apply yes again it does the same it brings the changes from temporary shells to working directory but it will not delete them from temporary shell okay stash drop will delete from a particular i mean delete from temporary shells what it will delete only a particular stash a particular stash will be deleted from temporary shells whereas here clear will delete all the stashes from temporary shells if you want you can take a snapshot of this for reference Can you just explain uh, the difference between pop and drop? Hmm. Uh, oh, can you uh, explain once again? Explain the difference between pop and drop. Pop will see here. It will unstash the changes. Means brings the changes from temporary shells to working directory, mm -hmm. and also it will delete from temporary shells. Whereas drop will not unstash. See this. Compare this. It will just delete from the temporary shells. That's all. It will not unstash. Okay. Yeah. It will not unstash. It will just clear from the temporary shells. It will not bring back to the working directory. It's just okay. to clean the temporary shell. Right. And then. stash with a minus p partial stash or a specific stash stashing a particular file hope this analogy i mean this chart makes sense okay for quick reference yes preeti it helps so that is about the stash we have another advanced concept called rebase Can I go ahead with the rebase? Good yes, to go. Yeah. Or do yeah. you think this is enough for today? Or can I go ahead with the rebase? As well, we I discussed think, some. Go ahead with the rebase. Enough. This is enough. Uh, we'll practice. Yeah, I think so. We will practice first. It is enough for today. all right so we will uh, close here practice the concept of branching merging stash but please stay back okay take up some quiz on branching concepts before you leave okay are you interested in the quiz should i conduct this uh, regularly or are you interested how many of you want this kind of exercise every day Uh, I, I, I love it. I love it. I yeah, yeah, it's yes. good to have. Uh, yeah, it's like a learning check. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. I'm sharing the quiz today. Um, this uh, today I'm going to share you a quiz from Google Forms. I'll share the link so that uh, you can see them better. There were some glitches with the Zoom quiz. They were not uh, 
so effective, I believe, at least. Uh, I'm sharing it. Okay, here is the URL. Right. Got the quiz, everyone? Got the link? So like where have it headed? In the Zoom chat. Oh, sorry. One second, one second. Um, uh, now you should, everyone should get. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Raghu, I have shared it now to all the audience. Got it now? Please confirm me if everyone received this link. Yes, we have got it. Okay, okay. Thank you. Please get started. Okay, you'll have 10 minutes for it. 